Hello gardeners, coming at you from the garden in the middle of fall. It's October, we've had our first frosts here on the west coast of Canada, and the star of today's video is the amazing and gigantic cauliflower. Today we're gonna talk about all the cabbage family plants like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage that you can grow in your garden, and then you can have these amazing spring harvests if you plant it late in fall, or these amazing fall harvest if you plant it in early spring. I'm going to tell you how I got this gorgeous thing here in the garden and we're going to talk through it so you have maximum success in your garden. I'm Stacy Taves. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. So this gigantic cauliflower is growing in our garden on the west coast of Canada. We're in growing zone eight. So what I'm gonna share with you today works in growing zone eight or a little colder or a little warmer if your plants can manage through the winter. Now this one is not gonna to have to manage through the winter because I'm gonna pick it as our first frosts are coming on but the neighboring plants on both side of it are a winter hardy cauliflower. They're just starting to form heads and we're not gonna harvest them until after the new year comes in spring next year so that I can have big cabbages or cauliflowers or broccolis in fall and then wait through the winter as their buddies keep on growing and maturing and when the warmth of spring hits, I get another harvest. So I just wanna first of all have a chance to harvest this beauty with you so you can see how big it is, the success we had, and I'm gonna show you how I laid out this bed which has three rows in it running from top to bottom so that there's no disease, maximum nutrition, and very little effort going into getting such a bountiful harvest. Let's check out the size of this cauliflower. It's almost hard to believe how big this thing is. I've got a knife here because I always give my plants the option to grow another head of anything in the cabbage family so I don't rip up the plant, I just cut off the head. Okay, let's take off a few of these big leaves and get a sense of how gigantic this is. I don't know about your family, but one of the things that we find really accessible for our family is roasting different cabbage family veggies. Look at the size of that. This is going to be a whole cookie sheet or cookie tray just with a bit of olive oil and salt put in the oven to roast it up. Roasted cauliflower is amazing. It's also the most versatile vegetable I find. If you steam it and put it into a sauce you can use a hand blender and it can turn into a cheese sauce or a base in a casserole that just gives incredible creamy texture. It goes beautifully with cheese or cream sauces. Look at the size of that. No disease, no critters in it and the plant might still actually grow another head so I'm just going to give it the chance to do that. I do that in all my cabbage growing. I always cut off or twist off the heads so that the plant's root system can keep on producing. Here you can get a good sense of how big this head of cauliflower is. It's absolutely massive. I didn't uh, illuminate what I would do when I roast this or bake it. I didn't really make sense of it if you haven't done it before. I basically take all the little pieces and break them up with a knife or by hand so that when I'm roasting it it's just little pieces like this, little cauliflower nuggets. If you do them at the right temperature you can even get them a little bit crispy. You're moving almost into french fry territory. This is so delectably yummy to eat when it's roasted with a bit of olive oil. I can't overemphasize that. Now I just want to make sense for you of what I've done here in this row of different cabbage family plants. This one here, this one here, they just have little heads forming on them and they're going to grow right through the winter and then in late spring, probably about April, May, I'll be able to start harvesting big heads like this that have grown right through the winter. So in setting up this bed, it's about five feet wide, a meter and a half wide, and I have three drip lines because I have three rows. So this is a row of cabbage and chard and zucchini. There's a row of potatoes behind and a row of lettuces and snow peas over there. And in between every row of plants, when I plant little starts, I put down coffee sacks. And coffee sacks are covering all the soil except for a very narrow little piece of exposed soil where my plants are. So no weeds can grow up through that and all the moisture stays suppressed. There's a drip line every 30 centimeters that's pushing out the water just to the plants that I've planted and want to grow so I'm not watering any weeds either. So it's very hard for them to succeed and very easy for the things I want to grow to succeed. I plant my cabbage family plants every two feet. So that's only 60 centimeters, only about this far apart. So they're crowding into each other which is again preventing the weeds from having a chance and they're really dense together and in that 
I'll sometimes even get cabbages that are up to or over 10 pounds, the size of a regulation size basketball. So you could check my drip irrigation video out. You could check out my C is for cabbage video out on harvesting. But what I'd really like you to know how to do is how to start little cabbage family plants and then get them in the garden and optimize how they get growing. So I've got a great little video called How to Grow Starts. Check that out. That would be the ideal way to get your cauliflower, cabbage, uh, broccoli growing. One of my other faves is sprouting broccoli, which tends to do even better in the winter than full heads of broccoli. Sprouting broccoli, you just grab little pieces off in spring. It's wonderful. So that's a bit about what I do to set it up with all the soil covered, the drip irrigation underneath, the spacing of every two feet, and the soil in spring just gets a little bit of rotted chicken manure or compost, and I always amend the soil because it's quite acidic here where I am on the west coast and my soil's heavy. I, am, I just amend it a little bit with some lime so that it just kind of neutralizes the soil's pH and the cabbage love it, as do all their buddies in the same family. Guys, I hope that you found this short little video on growing cabbage family plants very valuable for you for success in the garden. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'll keep on giving you great resources. Till next time.